Very, game, very impressed. Game two is on Belshire Vestage. Let's go ahead and hop in. And I just want to say, the way Deer was posturing and positioning his army, he was never trying to fight. No. Uh, to me, it felt like he was, I don't know, defending aggressively. Does that make sense? He's yeah. Taking a forward stance on the map and just making it hard for and that's Hero why to he do was anything. able to even up the work account as well because Hero was like, "Hey, is this guy actually going to attack me? Is he actually going to attack mm. me?" And despite having three bases early on and having a probe lead early on, they was able to turn that around and create yeah. a probe lead for himself. Uh, I guess that's uh, what a WCS Korea is made of, man, because that was a very that good was game. Even when you perhaps like it didn't look super impressive, I loved it. It was so good. Absolutely sick. And here he is, Kev, down in the bottom right-hand corner of Belshire Vestige. The WCS Korea champion, his name is Deer. Look how cool he looks. Where can we see him? Oh, I missed him there. The top left hand corner of Belshire Vestige, the blue Protoss player, Liquid Hero. What a baller. He <laughs> is a sick nerd baller indeed. Now, Belgium is a map that plays out very different than uh, Taldarim. I want to say Taldarim. Why do I keep... Because it Will looks like Taldarim, <laughs> it feels like Taldarim, but Kev, this ain't Wings of Liberty no more. It no. Just, it's just not Taldarim, no matter how much you might want it back. <laughs> I don't really want Taldarim <laughs> back. And I don't think many people out Every here Every game want. of Fourgate. <laughs> Uh, oh god, yeah, TVP <laughs> was awful on it. Uh, now this map plays out so different, it's very hard to predict how both players are going to open. Double gateway openings are pretty popular on this map, so you get some map presence early on with three stalkers, but it is very hard to make predictions. Belshire's weird, man. You get a little bit of everything on this map. Yep. As, uh, as so far, the build orders look pretty similar. Yeah, that's a... Uh, He's mining gas with three probes on both of the simulators very early on. This might mean that he wants to do something similar to what we saw last game. Uh, Zealot, Sentry, Modesty of Core, Expand maybe. Or Hero, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes double gate once again. Yep. But uh, we will have to wait and see just how this develops. Both players getting that early Zealot. And Hero scouting with the probe. They are uh, deciding not to scout yet. He scouted very late as well. Yeah. Such uh, a sick opening by Deer on Will. We're just going one gate, fast expand. Stargate. <laughs> yeah, he went with, uh, with championships comes supreme confidence. But Hero has a couple championships of his own. I'm sure he's not too <laughs> nervous. Up against the uh, reigning. Most of the time in cold countries as well. And Canada is pretty cold too. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is nothing to be proud of, guys. <laughs> oh, come on, Kev. I know you like the chilly weather. You get to put on your jacket. I do, look I do. All, look all cool. It, feel, it feels fresh. There is opening one gate, Stargate, this game. Yeah. He's going to follow this up uh, with a... No, Hero's going to follow it up with a sentry. Well, Hero's going to go one gate, fast expand, while... Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Hero just can't catch a break in PvP, I swear to God. Yeah. We'll see how Deer plays this. There are... Yeah, there are many ways. Yeah. And in the last game, he opened up with an Oracle, which was surprising. But I think if, if Deer opens this uh, with a Phoenix, that makes four Phoenix and drops either one or two additional gates and runs across the map. With the first Phoenixes, he can force an early Photon Overcharge. The moment it runs out, he can win the game. And there's the Phoenix wow. opening. That's exactly what you were talking about. So, Deer, uh, once more with what we would call the Build Order Advantage. What will he do oh, with it? Okay, okay, this is good news for Hero. That means that uh, Deer is not gambling. Because, of course, Deer doesn't know what Hero is doing. If he's playing against the Dark Templar opening and he doesn't make a robotics facility, then he, you know, he's digging his own grave because DT is going to straight up kill him. Uh, so at least he's making a small investment in the Robo, which might force him to turn it into a macro game, but he can still kind of ignore it after he scouts what's going on, yeah. and then still go one base aggression. It's a good scout. He sees the Nexus and pulls back before Hero is able to spot that oh. probe. And now he makes an Oracle, and that's not, not so sure how I feel about that. He has two uh, Phoenixes. Maybe he's going to try to force a Photon Overcharge and maybe lift up a Sentry. I'm not sure what he wants to do with the two Phoenixes. I find it weird Oracle timing as well. Normally you would say either open up with the Oracle or make it a little later. Then again, everything you don't expect might hit harder. That's I don't true. think Hero is expecting uh, an Oracle after two Phoenixes. Something you have to appreciate at this level of play is some things that maybe aren't supposed to work work better because they're not supposed to work. Mm -hmm. As uh, we see the Phoenixes of Deer just kind of floating through. One of them's going to take quite a bit of damage. Yeah, that's a little sloppy here. And he still hasn't killed anything with it either. 
What these two phoenixes will do is give him a crazy amount of map control uh, and map vision, and he might be able to pull a couple of units for, from Hero out of position and then fly in with the Oracle. I love that he denied that scout, by the way. Very yeah. well done. So I think what he's going to try to do is lure those units towards the natural and be like, hey, you can shoot at my phoenixes, and then the Oracle's going to fly in. But I feel Hero has is pretty safe. Yeah, uh, look how well he's doing this. He's got a couple stalkers in the natural. He's got a couple stalkers in the main base. He keeps the photon, uh, mothership core over here, so photon overcharge might hit hard. So we'll see. We'll see. But I feel like Hero is doing it uh, correctly. Yeah. An immediate photon overcharge. That Oracle's going to do no damage. So uh, nicely done from Hero. We are also seeing an expansion out of Deer. So he is uh, going to be macroing up behind this. His immortal production has begun. There's no more commitment to, uh, to Phoenixes. This has worked out kind of OK for Hero. Okay? Yeah, very well OK. And I find it kind of weird that like he opened up with a target, but they didn't really commit to it, unless this was his level of commitment, where he wanted to go with this little trick where he would lure the gateway units out of position and bank on the Oracle to deal a lot of damage. Now, that wasn't really the case. So you can safely say that these target units, other than giving a crazy amount of information, haven't really paid for themselves. Yeah, they've killed like a probe or two. It's 32 probes to 35, 36 now here with a small economic advantage. His Twilight Council is already down. He's got some observers out on the map, so he's got uh, uh, a reasonable amount of map vision. Uh, very, very early Templar archives. Uh, a couple of High Templars feedback would be very good against most of these target units, as all of them have energy. But of course, the potential of having Archons as well. This uh, Mothership Core is not going to fall against just two Phoenixes. This is turning out really well. This is a good scout though for there, but I really kind of like Hero's position while early game, you know, normally one gate Stargate against one gate Fast Expand Robo. That's not the scenario you want to find yourself in. Yeah, not a build order that uh, you, might, uh, you might choose out the gate. But uh, for now, Hero continues to build on his... Uh, I mean, it's still very know. close. It, it, is, it is so close. We look at the units tab. Uh, Deer has the immortal advantage. Hero does have more stalkers, obviously, because he's been producing them to fight the, uh, the phoenixes and the oracle. He and still has that oracle really there. The oracle is gathering up a lot of uh, energy, though, so a single feedback would kill this oracle. And this is something that Hero uh, you know, hopes to achieve with these high templars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is very hard for Hero. If Hero has absolutely no idea what what shape he really is in. He probably well, feels relatively confident. He, he, did did get, he did get one good hallucinate scout uh, about a minute oh. ago okay. uh, that flew right through the main base, but, but Deer has not allowed another one to go out. And that's why we see Hero so frantically trying to scout. These poor Phoenixes, they probably feel like they killed seven Phoenix, but <laughs> the kill count is on zero. We're way ahead, Commander. Oh, I think he uh, flew in the Oracle, right? Uh, looks yeah. like it. Yeah. He flew in the Oracle while I was chasing away the hallucinated uh, or following the hallucinated Phoenix. We saw Deer flying in the Oracle, or well, we didn't see it, but he tried. But it got feedback immediately, so it did absolutely zero damage. Or maybe it got one probe kill, one additional. But still, very good feedback. Yes, sir. Uh, for now, it's all about uh, just establishing the, the larger army and being able to engage well. Again, we see Deer opening up with the Colossus. He's uh, creating that path for himself. Hero also dropping the Robo Bay. Um, despite opening up with the Templar Archives, probably just want to be safe against his target units and you know, try to see if he could use feedback. Oh, Phoenix is finally doing a little bit of damage. They're yeah. going to pick up a few probe kills, limiting some of the gas income of Hero. He will, of course, immediately solve that. The Immortal count, Kev, is quite different. Deer's made four Immortals. Hero's still with just the one. Uh, both of them getting their third bases around the same time, but I worry a little bit that if Deer was managing to, to force a fight, it wouldn't be one that Hero would be able to do too well in. I find this surprising to send out a War Prism in this phase of the game when you know there oh. are Phoenixes out on the map. And that's what happens. <laughs> well, I guess Hero just wants to be aggressive in some way because he's just like, I'm just defending now and I have no idea what's going on because most of my hallucinations keep dying as well. Yeah. Well done by Deer, denying that little bit of harassment as he will continue. Mm. It's like Dude. a robot going down for Hero, too. Oh, man, look at this pylon outside Hero's third base. That's Dangerous. Crouching probe, hidden pylon. I'm not sure how many uh, gates we have on the map. Ooh, seven. A big zealot warping could indeed cancel that base, and that would get really dicey. Yep. Uh, Hero trying to establish a little bit of map control. He's taken both Zonaga Towers. He's got great vision around the map, doesn't, but doesn't know about the pylon in his main. Uh, Immortal Count continues to climb for Deer. He's up to five, and he's making a six. Hero is trying to uh, pull him out of position a little bit and then try to hit this third base and still uh, recall out. He's going to have quite a bit of damage, but uh, just not enough. And I think that was a wise decision for Hero to back off because with only a single mortar, he's going to have to recall, though. Yep. 
Archon's gonna try to pick up a Phoenix kill, but that ain't gonna happen, and Hero does. Peace out. Recalls back to his natural expansion. Slowly but steady, I just feel that Deer is putting himself in a better and better position. Hero is producing two Colossi at a time, so that is definitely something to hold on to. But that Immortal Count is scary, there's a small work lead for Deer. This base was up just a little bit quicker. Uh, upgrades are a little bit quicker. Just a lot of things are slightly in Deer's favor. And uh, obviously you're gonna have to dig that Immortal Count 6 against 2. Ooh. Yeah. It's 120, uh, 24 supply against 129, so it's still quite close in that regard. The actual army supply is 63 versus 74, so uh, it's hard to say that one player has a, a larger army, but what's not so hard to say is that one player has a more dangerous one, and that is going to be Deer, because he has uh, that much higher immortal count. He's got uh, a few more zealots, and uh -oh. uh, frankly... I like what, here, what Deer is doing over here as well, man. Deer's War Prism and Rest is going to be a little more successful. Of course, there is no Stargate out on the map for Hero. Hero has absolutely no vision on this left side of the map, other than this little probe. If he sees that Prism in time, that could help him so much, because a big Zealot Warping in the main, while Deer is attacking that third base. He has so many Immortals, he kills the Nexus in a blink of an eye and is able to recall out immediately. Yeah. Uh, oh wow, here comes the War Prism over to the main base. I don't know that there's anything back at home to deal with this. There's not a single cannon being warped in. Oh. But a hero oh. kind of knows though, knows that he knows what Deer wants to do. But he cannot underreact against this either. He's going to take a lot of damage in his main yeah. base if he doesn't properly react. Only able to warp in two Zealots. This is not what he needs. More Zealots being warped in. They're going to focus down that forge. Hero is able to repel the attack on his third base. But what can he do about this attack in the main? Ooh. Luckily, a Colossus will spawn. But Kevin, the forge was just killed. Hero loses a critical upgrade. And he might actually lose one oh, of his robotics oh, facilities Robo as is going to well. go down too. A huge attack here from Deer. And it is putting him in a much better position than he already was. Yeah, it was quite an investment, though. There was a lot of minerals. This didn't go too bad for Hero. He didn't really underreact, losing the forge. That's a pretty big blow. But, you know, it was kind of inevitable that he was going to lose something. And you'd rather lose your forge than your turret base. Yep. And it also catapults him into a bit of a lead in terms of the army supply. It's now 78 to 102. Hero with uh, far more zealots than Deer has out on the map. There's a zealot party on the right side of Belshire. Yeah, they're just kind of camping out. This one is just not sure if he can actually party with these guys. Wishes he knew how to build a fire. He's like, you guys are a little too crazy for me. <laughs> maybe one day. I think this one is actually hung over from last night's partying. <laughs> he's like, oh, that was a rough night. That's why he's missing a little bit of his health. <laughs> Dark Shrine being wiped in uh, here for Dero. Dark Shrine, always a good choice when you're on three bases. It's not a massive investment anymore. Also dropping the Stargate ban, but I'm afraid that Dero seems to have such excellent game sense in PvP that he's probably somehow able to attack right before Tempest really come into play. But we will see how that turns out. Yep. There are four Colossi out for Hero. This is... Mm, uh, God, it's just so hard with the Immortals, man. How do you attack Immortals? As uh, we do see Hero trying to get something done with a little Zealot run by into the third base. Picks up a couple probe kills. That's but pretty beyond good. that... You know, he's buying time for himself. He's throwing away some minerals. He has plenty of minerals. So he's just waiting for more expensive gas units. So all those small run bys, if he stalls Deer a little bit, then it's all fine. I'm taking a look, see if Deer knows about the Stargates. He doesn't, but this guy is so sick, man. It's just like he feels everything that's going on the map. This is the weakest moment for Hero. He doesn't have the same amount of Immortals. He lost the Robotics Facility. The Colossus count is even, but that's about it. Upgrade advantage is for Deer as well. If Deer is able to attack before these targets and Fleet Beacon come into play, I think he's going to be able to put himself in a fight oh. where he almost can't possibly lose. Hero continues to do a good job of buying time. That little DT run by uh, threatened the fourth expansion. Deer was able to deal with it, but it pulled his army back off the map once more. Zealots continue to be warped in around the map. Hero is trying to make Deer move and do just what you said, buy time. Here comes the, uh, the party squad <laughs> into the third base. They are, uh, they are ready to get down tonight. They will pick off this cannon, but I think Hero should be able to warp in a few units and deal with it. Or Wait, just send his army over. That does it too. Hey, two Tempests are halfway done. Two Tempests are already massive in a fight. Four would be fantastic. Hero would definitely love to fight with four Tempests. That's not going to be the case though. Deer starts attacking now. He's going to force a cancel on this fourth base. But as long as Hero stabilizes on three bases and, and he's able to get the Tempest count up to four and his plus three is able to finish up, something might still be possible. Uh, he might even be able to cancel Deer's fourth expansion. Oh, uh, nope, never mind. Take that back. That's a big Zealot warp in and Deer oh, will defend. Oh, Hero a little bit out of position. Here come all those Immortals. Is the Mothership core with his army? Yes, it is. And Hero's going to... Oh, wow. That, that Nexus fell so fast. And yes, Deer is going to just back up a little bit. Will we see the recall? No, I think he's, he's not even, even thinking about fighting. It. He's like, hmm. 
My army doesn't look a lot weaker. He's so seven Colossi against four yeah, at the moment. It's 181 supply to 179. Very, very close. Two Tempest out for heroes. The third and fourth are popping out of those Stargates right now, so... Yeah, he, like, if, he's, if Hero's able to buy a little bit more time for himself, there might something still be possible, because the Colossus, uh, like, Deer is going to go up to nine Colossi. Now, that's definitely overkill. Certainly, if Hero's able to squeeze out six temp, as he's on four at the moment, four is already good. Yeah, and... I think uh, four might one shot. But he probably needs five. He's going to work on a fifth. Defense. It's on the way now. Hero retaking oh, his third base. Obviously, he doesn't want to lose that again. But Deer has had a fourth uh, now for a couple of minutes. His economy is just getting stronger and stronger. Both players are maxed. Yeah. So uh, it's not like the, the, uh, either army is going to grow much bigger than this. No, I totally agree with you, Ben. I feel that even if it comes up to the point where Hero is indeed going to have a stronger army because of those Tempest, uh, by the time that he crosses the map, like Deer probably has such a massive economy that he has so many gates behind this. Uh, well, actually, Hero has a small gate advantage, but it is double robo after all. Four additional gates are being warped in at the moment, so it's going to be 14 gates. It's really hard for Hero to win a fight and also win the game. Once more, Deer wants to do something about this third expansion. He's got a good position. This is hard for Hero to engage. Is this Nexus going to fall again? Hero throws down a time warp, which is uh, enough to, to scare Deer yeah. Five tempest. out of the third base. And with the Tempest in tow, these Colossi cannot stick around, and the Archon just giggles a little bit as he gets the shot. The Archon takes the bullet. That's a true body. I think uh, Tempest shots are made out of Archon pieces. I think they're made out of wrecking balls. They look like... <laughs> uh, I, would, I, would, I would burst into song right now, but... <laughs> <laughs> That's why, Ben. Monastery Core <laughs> taking a lot of damage. Monastery Cores are extremely important in this fight. My dear friend, Johan Merlo, always emphasizes on how important Time Warp is, and I couldn't agree more. It's very hard for Archons and Immortals to get in range of what they want to get in range of if they have to go through a Time Warp. And Hero is continuing with the Tempest production. He's going to go up to seven. Yeah, because he's like, man, this guy really loves his Colossi. I haven't seen this since Wings of Liberty. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's almost pure Colossus Archon, and yes, those are Immortals underneath the legs of these Colossi. Hero finally able to attack himself will deny this fourth expansion from Deer, and that is an important play. But look at the bank of Deer, Kev. 2K, 2K. He's got a lot of cash. He's going to go for a fight. He has a lot of Archons, 12 of them. But the Archons are kind of out of position now. I think this is a fight that's going to be as good for Hero as it's going to get, yeah. man. Preemptive, oh, whoa, whoa. Preemptive time orbs from Deer. It's going to make it hard for Hero to engage stuck right this. now. Once more, Hero loses his third expansion. How, but how is this army going to get out of here? The Mothership Core oh is my gone. God. Uh oh. Hero, can he answer? Can he respond with a big fight? Two Colossus down, three Colossus Sick. down. Will it be four? Yes, it will. And the army of deer is dwindling away. Another Colossus will fall. When will Hero turn to fight? Only three Colossi left, two Colossus left. Good. One Colossus against six. Hero's going to turn around now. Wow, Archons so sick. streaming forward. The army of deer cannot oh. fight the army of Hero, and it gets crushed. Wow, what a beautiful transition, and what a beautiful fight. Beautiful micro there by Hero. Hero did everything right. In brilliance. That engagement. Brilliance from Hero. Deer tries to reinforce with Stalkers, but that's not a good idea. Deer is in full retreat. Hero's got to do as much damage as he possibly can while Deer is on the ropes. He's down, but not out, Kev. Hero will, will should come crashing into this expansion if he realizes it's here. Maybe he'll just push into the natural and try to end the game. It's 100. 27 supply against 157 supply. Hero's economy is reeling. Oh. Let's not forget that he cannot replace units while Deer can. But he's not losing any units, Ben. These Colossus are all still alive. They will be completely untouched. These Tempests will force Deer to not make any Colossus anymore. He made a lot of Stalkers, and that's the last unit you want to have when your opponent has uh, four Immortals. Here we go. Zealots charging in. Stalkers are going to blink under the Colossi, but they're melting under the focused fire of a Immortals, Colossi, and Archons. Deer still pushes Hero back, but the last of his units will die. Good game. Hero wins game number two. Wow. And evens up the series. If patience has ever been a virtue, man, then it's been rewarded this Just game. Just phenomenal. Hero, I don't know. Man, that looks so bad at times. Wrecking balls, man. <laughs> Wrecking balls.